Symbols are an essential part of being human. Our entire alphabet is a bunch of symbols made to represent sounds. We use symbols for warnings, instructions, locations, and brands, and we use them in our faith. There are far more Christian symbols than we can possibly fit into one episode, so we're just going to take a look at a few. The first and most obvious symbol in the Christian faith is the cross. Once a symbol of torture and death, it's become a symbol of life and of resurrection. It's the most recognizable Christian mark on earth, and we use it everywhere. There are a few different designs of the cross used around the world. The most commonly used one is what is called the Latin cross. It is a simple cross, and it is the basic shape of a cross used in Roman crucifixion. Another interesting one that's quite recent comparatively is called the Jerusalem cross. This dates back to around the 12th century. The central cross represents the cross of Christ. The four smaller ones are either representations of the four gospels or a representation of the gospel being shared to all four corners of the earth. The Celtic cross was started in Ireland in around the 9th century. It features a circle behind the cross, a representation of the combined trinity of the three branches or a representation of the rising sun. The Coptic cross has four points that are equal distance from the center. Each end of the cross has three points representing the Holy Trinity. Together they make up 12 points. 12 for the 12 disciples going in all directions of the world to preach the gospel. You will see this basic shape in a lot of Eastern Orthodox designs, a cross that goes into three points at every end. Another such cross is the Ethiopian cross. Ethiopian crosses are incredibly complicated and no two are alike. We have one here. Ethiopian crosses are deliberately complex. The complexity is to represent the complexity of human life. No two human lives are the same. While every life and journey is unique, every life and journey is centered on Christ and the cross. The Orthodox cross is the most commonly recognized Orthodox symbol, and it is the one that comes up in your emojis when you search for Orthodox. While it started in Byzantium, it became more popular in Russia and the Slavic lands in around the 13th century and today is recognized as just an Eastern Orthodox cross. The top bar represents the sign that was hung above Jesus' head. The regular bar, familiar from the Latin cross, is there as well. And the bottom bar slanting upwards is the footrest that was on crosses and crucifixion in Roman times. It is slanted upwards in the direction of the thief at Christ's right side. The thief that chose at that last moment to follow Christ, to love him, and to whom Christ said, today you will be with me in paradise. The thief on Christ's left, deliberately chose the other way. He cursed Jesus, and the slanted direction shows which way these two men chose to go. The story goes that that bottom slanted line was first added by Andrew the Apostle himself in a sermon in which he was teaching about the resurrection and the crucifixion. The bottom line had been there, and he tilted it upwards. A design that's very similar to the cross and leading on from crosses is the anchor. The anchor closely resembles a cross, and it was used by early Christians under persecution because if you came across it anywhere, you would just think it was an anchor but it was a perfect example of a hidden Christian symbol because it mirrored Paul's words about the anchor of our souls. The anchor was often portrayed with another distinctly Christian symbol that's used around the world, the fish. It was a perfect symbol for early Christians to use because it was quite discreet. Because fish was one of the most eaten foods around the Roman Empire, it exactly mirrored the Christian understanding of the Eucharist, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. It also came from the water. Tertullian in the third century actually calls us Little fishes. Christians are little fishes, born in the waters of baptism as fish are born in the waters of the ocean. And he was referring to the fish sign when he wrote that. The use of the fish symbol as a Christian sign stems back from a Greek acrostic. The words Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior, start with the letters that spell out the Greek word for fish. Continuing on with letters, the letters IC, XC are abbreviations for Jesus Christ in Greek. They have little lines above them to signify that they are abbreviations and are often drawn with the word nika, meaning conquers. Jesus Christ conquers. You will still see this on almost all images of Jesus Christ in Eastern Orthodox art. Another ancient and highly widespread symbol is the kiro. The letters ki and ro look like the English letters x and p and they are the first two letters of the word Christos. Christ. This symbol can be found in the catacombs and on churches around the world dating back to the very early days of Christian faith. Because the two letters also represent the Latin letters P and X, it is often called the Pax symbol. Pax is the Latin word for peace, and this was seen as quite appropriate for a sign that represented the Prince of Peace. And you might look at our logo slightly differently when you realize that the first and last letters of our logo form the Kiro. Two more major letters that are often seen in various Christian art and often under the arms of the cross are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, who is Christ. Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. This is actually prefigured with the cross back in the Old Testament. Moses, when he stood above the people of Israel in battle, would stretch out his arms, prefiguring an early sign of the cross. 
When his arms grew too tired, he was held up by Aaron and Hur. In Greek, their names are Aaron and Or, Alpha and Omega, underneath the two arms of the cross. This is way back in the Old Testament. We could keep going for quite a while about Christian symbols, about symbols from earlier days that were brought into Christianity, about symbolism in animals and plants that were seen as representations of different lessons in Christianity, but we're going to stop it there for now. If you would like to see a volume two and a volume three and so on, let us know in the comments and we will bring that back. In the meantime, take a look at our video on the sign of the cross. And next time you see a Christian symbol, say a quick prayer to the reason those symbols are there. The person to whom these symbols are little signposts, a reminder of Jesus Christ and our Christian faith. In regards to the tea I am drinking, this is the perfect tea to choose for when you want to feel cozy and warm and comfortable. It is chamomile tea.